Hey, Sheriff. Well, how are you, Markham? What have you done about the Billingham case? Well, I'm sorry about Billingham, Markham. But what can I do about it? Do about it? He was shot and killed, wasn't he, by the cattle company's men? Yeah, but all three of them swear that Bellingham drew first. And you believe them? Now, it don't make no difference whether I believe them or not. There's no way proven that they ain't telling the truth. Well, now look Jim here, Sheriff. Sure treats the men right, Jim. Yes, I've heard about them. It's all job, you like it. Drink. More two gunmen to do the cattle company's killing. And you tell me the law can't do anything about it? Well, I... Uh... Well, now I'm going to talk with Tulliver. Yeah, well, if I was you, I'd go easy with him. And let him run us ranchers off the range? <laughs> Not me. Dad. Please be careful, Dad. Don't worry about me, Joe. He'll be all right, Miss Jones. Don't worry. If the company's thinking about you boys to do it. You can sure depend on us. That's a cinch back. Well, hello, Markham. Have a drink? No, thanks. Mr. Tulliver, we never had any of these two gunmen around here until you moved in the cattle company's outfit. And we don't like it. No? Well, the company's shipping in 40,000 more head of cattle. 40,000 more? Why, you know the range can't feed any more than it's got now. Well, the company's shipping them in, and I've got to feed them. Why, that means that, that 40,000 head of cattle are going to starve this winter. Not the company's cattle. Now, see here, Tulliver. We ranchers were here before the cattle company, and we're as going to... As far as that goes, it makes no difference. Government land is free range, and it belongs to them that's best able to hold it. Just a minute, you crooked pinhorn! You can't All right now. Gee, miss, I'm sure glad you didn't stop none of them slugs. Oh, thank you. What's the trouble? Trying to make his getaway after killing Red Collins. Oh, is that so? I've got plenty of witnesses here, though. Yeah. Oh, I saw how it happened. That was a good shot. Thank you, stranger. It's all right, sir. You all right, Joan? Frightened, I guess. Not bad shooting, eh, Markham? Yeah. Come on, Paul, let's get going. Right, boss. chance to use them guns, stranger? Weed's the name. Blackie Weed? Yeah. I've heard a lot about you. You know, I could use a man of your reputation for a wagon boss. How about it? I'd have to talk to my partner here. If you take me, you gotta take him. Pretty old, lady. Well, could you think of a better recommendation for a two-gun man? You win. You're both on for a hundred a month and found. Come on in, boys. The drinks are on me. We kind of figured on hitching up with this cattle outfit, didn't we? Sure. Looks if we was hitched without even asking for it. No, nah, Joe. We ain't taking no job from that lizard. Oh, you're too finicky, Blackie. That man's plum pison. He'd have me doing something foolish, sure. Oh, you'd make out somehow. 
Let me have the guns, boy. Please throw that careless with these pistols. Right. Right? I will. Sure, I get them back. Yes, sir. Will. You check them when you come in, and you get them when you go out. No, I don't. Let him have them, Jake. I ain't having any more company men shooting each other. <laughs> All right, boss. <laughs> there you are, Grizzly. Yeah. From Thorne. Markham's moving some stairs tomorrow over towards Devil's Gorge. Come right in, gents, and check your guns. You check your guns here. Not my guns. Sorry, we can't make any exceptions, boys. Two gunmen are too valuable to kill each other off. I'm hungry, Joe. It's all right. Everybody else is checked. Well, you can do it, Blackie, but I'll get my groceries elsewhere. I never heard of a gent starving to death in a settlement, but I know plenty of parties has died from a bad case of empty holster. <laughs> Come on, Blackie. Let's go and meet the other wagon bosses. Guess me and Joe don't want that job, mister. Well, you can't back out on me after I've hired you. You made us an offer, and I ain't taking it. I can get him to set up wine for the crowd. Watch me. Howdy, big boy. Howdy, miss. Me and the girls were just arguing about you, so I came over to settle it. Yeah? I made a bet. You did? But before I tell you what it was, you got to tell me where you come from. Well, folks say my mother found me out in the garden under a head of cabbage. Oh, no. I lose the bet. That's too bad. Yeah. I bet the girl's a bottle of wine you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> the senor wish for something? I sure do. I want a lot of beef, plenty of beans, and side dishes, some coffee. And don't forget to tell that cook I believe in pie. Si, senor. And Chico. Si, senorita. Take a bottle of wine over to the girls. Si, senorita. That bottle of wine's on you. Yeah? Well, it was your fault I lost. <laughs> <laughs> you win. And you're a good sport, too, mister. But my girl, watch this. You bet I know a sport when I meet one, mister. Haven't been a lady in some of the most refined joints. <laughs> hey, Kitty. Oh, wait a minute. This gent's fine. Not for you, you ain't. Wait a minute. <laughs> he sure busted him in the jaw, didn't he? You. Yeah? All right, throw him out. You learn to be a little careful, right? Yeah. We're coming to you. Yeah. Come on. You reckon you can travel? You better get going, then. You're not hefty enough to mix with Tulliver.
You was right, Joe. Took more than a fish to mark you that away. Who were it? Tulliver. Dumb of him to forget that you had a partner now, weren't it? Yeah. Well, let's go. Well, stranger, you changed your mind about them guns? Not by a jugful. I'm so old, I got a palsy in one of my trigger fingers. Now get over there, quiet. Go ahead, Blackie. Now all you gents who saw my partner throw it out is invited into the next room. Get going. Barty, you make me nervous. Get over on this side. Get along. Get moving. Get moving. Get over there. Get over there. Get up there. Now, you gents, keep away from the doors. The first man that tries to get out gets plugged. You sky grabbers can take your hands down. I reckon my partner here did a good checking job. Say, so, what the? I just come back and try my hand at a fair fight, that's all. Don't let him go! Stay back, little gal. Ain't nobody gonna leave this schoolroom. Go ahead, Joe. Get on your horse. I'm sorry, boys. I'm gonna have to leave your little party. I'll thank all you just stay in camp till you hear our horses. Don't forget it. like a mighty nice little place, Joe. Want to get off and try it? Yeah. Come on. Hold it, boy. Hold. Hold. Hold, steady. Hold. Whoa. Hold it.
Howdy. Howdy. We was wondering whether you could bunk a couple of line riders for the night. Why, sure. Come right in. Supper is still on. Thanks. Come on, Joe. Well, I didn't recognize you. You were sure welcome. Move right in. Go down, Joe. Well, come on, come on, have a little chat. It'll go a long way with you. Ada! Fish up something for the boys. Hope it's not any trouble. No, sit right down. It's Thanks. a pleasure, I'm sure. Yes, right down there, that's all right. That'd be fine. Dad? Yes, Joe? I'm having a terrible time balancing these accounts. Maybe I can help you. Oh, the boys are putting up here for the night. You recognize him? Why, yes, of course. Uh, Mr. Uh... Weed's the name. My friends call me Blackie. This is my partner, uh, Joe Kearney. I'm glad to know you. I hope that you'll make yourselves at home. Thanks. I'll have your horses taken care of. I like that man, Joe. Yeah? He's sure in for a heap of trouble, though. Mm-hmm. He is if these home-growed cowboys of his run up against any real gun play. Yeah. I know what you're thinking. Well, our deal with the cattle company didn't pan out so well. Might as well hitch up with this outfit. Well, I ain't never run away from trouble. But this looks like to me as though we were going out of our way of looking for it. Well, I was kind of expecting a little trouble. I believe I'll ask the boss if he could use a couple of grade A two gun men. Ah, that's a good idea. Yeah, Pruitt's barn caught fire last night. Accidental. Too bad he couldn't get his horses out. Don't suspect you, does he? No. He thinks I'm his ace high cowboy. Kind of figure some of the cattle company men have done it. We'll have him pulling stakes. He ain't got much sand anyhow. Yeah. Now some of these other ranchers will be tougher. Howdy, Thorne. Hi. What's up? Say, boss, them two gun toters that strayed in yesterday just hired out to mark them. Who, Blackie Weed? Yeah. Him and Grandpap, too. They're going to learn the old man's boys how to throw two guns. All he can teach them mavericks. Ain't gonna worry me none. But this Blackie Weed. And we gotta get rid of him. That suits me. I've got an idea. Cattle belly. Come on back here. Come on back here. The first thing you got to get used to is being shot at. Now we're trying again. Only the first man that lifts a foot gets plugged. Well, you're improving, boys. Sure, and hurry back. Ooh, hold me. Hold, son. Now, if the other feller's shooting ain't fatal, 
Yours better be. Get out them guns and unload them. I ain't taking no chances on greenhorn shooting. Oh, hold it. Well, how's your class, Joe? Oh, they're getting along. You fellas don't need to be discouraged. Blackie here weren't no world beater before I took him in hand. <laughs> but now... Hey, Blackie, show the boys what you can do. Well, Mr. Dan McGrew. Gee, I'm... I'm mighty sorry, miss. I should think you would be. Just look at those clothes. Well, maybe I could help you pick them up. Uh, you got any more clothes pins? Help yourself. You see, miss, I was just sort of encouraging the boys by showing them how old Joe taught me the gun trade. Oh, so you consider carrying two guns a trade? Well, a man's got to do something for a living, hasn't he? But you could do something else. Yes, but when a man gets a pack and two guns, it's... Uh, Kind of hard to lay him aside. You mean once you've shot a man? I guess I'll have to be a little more careful. My first one was a road agent. Tried to hold up a stage while I was driving. He missed his shot. I was just kind of lucky with mine. Well, I don't see why shooting a robber should make you a two-gun man. What do you see? You see, when they took the mast off of him, they found out he was Ed Nolan. That started everybody to pointing me out as the man that killed him. And it wasn't long till Ed's friends come looking for me. See, once you had the reputation of being the man that killed Ed Nolan, you got to keep shooting the gents that want to be known as the man that killed Blackie Weed. Now, Kettlebelly, you don't aim when you're snap shooting. You just lay your finger along the gun and pint it that way. Oh, blimey. That beats aiming to holler, don't yeah. it? Well, now get over against the wall, and when I start shooting at you, why, you pint at me and pull the trigger. Yeah, but Mr. Kenny... No argument. Do as I tell you. Yeah, but I'm afraid... Get over there. But I don't want to... Shut up or I'll plug you. Stop! What? Say... Didn't you hear me tell the boys to unload their guns? Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you. My gun was loaded. Oh. <laughs> well, that was one on me. Uh, I guess we'll call it quits for today. <laughs> okay, boss. But where will all this lead you? Well, a uh, two-gun man can't think too much about that. Kind of unsteady is his hand. Sometimes they get us early. Sometimes we get a nice, easy job, like being sheriff, maybe. Oh, so that's what you're looking forward to. Yes, am I got kind of got my heart set on the, on being a peace officer in some little quiet town. Not too quiet, not too lively. Some place where I could have a little home and a wife and maybe some kids. I guess I gotta be saddling my horse, miss. I think you can take care of it now.
Gee, she's a mighty fine gal, Tarzan. Gonna make somebody a mighty fine wife. <laughs> I don't guess, though, that she'd like to have anything to do with an ornery two-gun toter like me. What's ailing you, Blackie? Why, ain't you got any sand? Scared of a woman? Well, no, not exactly. Not scared, no. Say, if you don't ride in and make a play for her, I'll... By golly, I'll cut you out myself. <laughs> you always josh me, Joe. <laughs> cut it out. Oh, Jim. Hey, track over to the Markham Ranch. Thorne's got a little job he wants you to turn. Get me? Sure, boss. I'm as good as I am. Where you going? To a funeral, Joe? Funeral? No. I'm going to courting. I warned you I would, didn't I? <laughs> courting. <laughs> That's right. You laugh while you can. But you better be getting ready to be best man at a wedding. You ain't serious, are you, Joe? Oh, ain't I? Hmm. Well, I've heard of stranger things than that happening, Joe. <laughs> you never can tell. <laughs> Better shine them up mighty pretty. She might be awful particular. <laughs> Better wet it down a bit, Brig. All right, look out for that. Hey, boss. Dash hang these wartime presses around here. Say, do you know that this ranch has gone plumb loco since them two gunners drifted in here? Look at that. Hmm. Pretty good shooting, I'd say. Yes, well, I ain't for none of this shooting or rip snorting around here. Come in mighty handy in case of range war. There's the trouble. They've been talking range war so much that they got everybody around here jumping, shooting at their own shadows. Oh, <laughs> well, Riggs aren't the fun. It ain't none of my business, Mr. Markham. But I agrees with Riggs. Having men like Blackie Weed around here just gives others good reason to cause trouble for us. Maybe it's because you're a little gun-shy, Thorne. Well, anyway, I was just telling you, Weed has a bad reputation, and just hiring him makes us look in the wrong in case there's any trouble. Well, I reckon his reputation ain't any blacker than Tullival and his gang. And if it is, all I want him to do is to live up to it in case the cattle company starts anything. You know, miss, us two gunmen is terrible misjudged. Of course, we don't last so long, but while we're living, we make just as good husbands as any. <laughs> uh, of course, there's arguments for and arguments again. But figuring husbands is perishable stock anyhow, appears like to me that a two-gun at a hundred a month beats an underpaid cowpuncher all to holler. Well, now, perhaps you're right, Joe. Do you know any two-gun man that would like to get married? Well, I, I sure know one that would be mighty happy if a certain particular gal would hitch up with him. Oh, then you know the girl, too. Well, yes. Uh, not long, but kind of favorable. What does she look like? Well, I ain't much at describing, but uh, I figured her eyes are blue. Why, Mr. Kearney, are you proposing marriage? <laughs> well, now I guess maybe I am. And I know Blackie's a hankering for it. Blackie? <laughs> Sure, and I can recommend him to you, too. Oh, I don't... Now, he don't... ain't scared of nothing that totes a gun or wears pants, but he sure is petticoat shy. Howdy, miss. You must get away, or Tulliver's men will kill you. Well, maybe they will. Again, maybe they won't. Anyhow, miss, I ain't running away from trouble. 
Did you say he was afraid of petticoats? <laughs> well, now, that is funny. Yes, isn't it? You better herd yourself back to town pronto. If Tulliver finds out you're trailing Blackie, he'll sure make it plumb uncomfortable for you. But I only came to warn. You just let me look after Blackie. I knew, but listen. You'll make him leave, won't you? Sure, you just leave everything to me. Goodbye. Now you've gone and ruined everything. What's the matter now? What did I do? I was getting you set nice with a Markham gal and explaining it's because you're petticoat shy that you don't do your own proposing. Why, Joe, you didn't propose to Miss Markham for me, did you? Sure. And she's inclined to consider the proposition favorable when we look over and there you are with that kitty gal. Hey, everybody, come around, boys. Folks, come on, then. Come in here. Hurry up. Hey, fellas, come on here, boys. Come here. Hurry up, boys. Say, so listen. The same thing happened here at Brown's that happened over at Purick the other night. Only this time it was murder. It was my Indian boy. Seems likely he surprised whoever was setting the barn afire. And he got a knife in the back. Likely we'd be next. We gotta take turns at night guarding and be ready to shoot. I'll start that job tonight, boss. I, uh, kind of figure this job belongs to me, Thorne. You're right, Blackie. Now, listen, boys. Yeah. We're going to get these fellas because if we don't, they're going to get us. Yeah, there's sure. a bunch yeah. of them, and they're pretty tough umbrage, and I don't want every of to fail on them. I wonder why Thorne wanted to stand guard tonight. Hey, you curses, roll out in there. Hey, don't you hear that shot? Get your duds on there. Get outside, quick. Nice time to get anybody up to shoot. What's the matter, bud? What's the matter, bud? What's the matter, bud? Well, a gang of men raided your steers up there, and they cut out some of them. There were too many for me, so I've come for help. Hurry up! They stampede them toward Devil's Gorge. Come on, boy. Somebody must have been a mark. I didn't think you could figure that out. Say, I wonder where Weed is. Thought he was standing guard. Yes, that's right. Uh, uh, where is he, boss? There's Weed now. What's the trouble, boys? Reckon maybe you'd know. Somebody raided Jim and his steers. When he came for help, we found the gate open and all our horses gone. Come on, Jim, show me the way. Come on, let's get going. Oh, blimey, look at him go. Boss. I reckon Weed can explain that gate being open. Well, we'll wait till he gets back and hear what he has to say. Did you mention yeah. anything uh, like that? I never believed in it. Oh. Yes, and I was never strong for them. Ooh, oh boy. Looks like we cut the trail, Jim. Oh, 
Oh boy. Oh. Not a sign of them, Jim. They must have stampeded them over the cliff. I reckon they did, Blackie. Oh, oh boy. All right, come on, Jim. Let's go. Come in. Oh, good morning, Mr. Weed. Good morning, Miss Joanne. I just dropped in to tell you goodbye. Why? Are you quitting? Fired. Fired? Well, Riggs thought I was responsible for them steers going over in the gorge. He let me go when your father went to town to see the sheriff. Why, he had no right to do that. I'm going right out and tell him so. But, Miss Joanne, I don't want you to do that. All I want you to do is just to believe that I... that I... I wouldn't do you or your father any harm. Well, I know that. Hello, Joan. Howdy, Weed. Howdy. Father Riggs has fired Mr. Weed. Yeah, he thought I let them bars down. He did, eh? Well, if he fired you, I'm hiring you again right now. Mr. Markham, though, I... Now I'm going right out and tell Riggs. Hey, Riggs! What I've got to say to Riggs is private. All right, boss. Just hired a hand. Yeah, who? Blackie Weed. Now listen here, boss. If I'm going to be foreman of this year outfit, I'm going to You've tell you... You've got to keep your head about you, Riggs. Perhaps Blackie was responsible for what happened last night, and perhaps he wasn't. Now, the only way to find out is to keep him on and watch him. I never thought of that. I reckon you're right. Let him night ride again and keep your eye on him. I'll tend to that tonight, personal. Hey, listen. I'm going to rein around to the right. Circle in on him. And if he's up to any fun, I'm going to find it out. All right, Riggs. They're not going to fool us with any gunshots tonight, old horse. What you doing here, Thorn? Oh, hello, Riggs. Well, I just came out here. Uh, you had a reason talking again, this blacky weed, hey? Eh?
about Markham Foreman. Why, he went out last night to keep an eye on a two-gun toter he was kind of suspicious of. He never come back. Yeah. Markham calculated that maybe he'd ride on out on the range. This afternoon, they found Riggs' horse tangled up in the range, and his saddle were empty. Yeah. Some yeah. of the boys are out there looking for him now. Yeah. Both me and Riggs tried to warn Markham about two gun men. This Blackie Weed in particular. You know, where is this two gun toter now? He's locked up in the smokehouse there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sort of guarding his gun. Ranchers are just drifting in in case it turns out that this two gun toter is responsible for Riggs' disappearance. Yeah. Yes, Sheriff, he probably is. We found Riggs poking money hidden in Weed's bunk. Oh, yeah. 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 Silver, you ride back and tell him at the ranch. We'll take the body in. Okay, boss. Well. All right, boys. You being the sheriff of this county looks to me like you'd do something about this. Now, don't yeah, get excited. Right. we got to wait till Markham gets back. No, well, you they got to do something. There's that's one of the boys coming back. Hey, we found Riggs. Where? Right through the head and dead or not him. Where'd you find him? Hey, down there at the fork, about five miles from here. There's weed getting away. After him, boys. After him. Go.
brother. He got away in there after him. Who, Weed? Oh, they'll kill him without even giving him a chance. Well, he didn't give poor Riggs much of a chance. Was a slip somehow, got plumb away. Why didn't you last to him? Huh? Oh, shut up, you dumbbell. Now you're going in and have a few words with Tolliver. Get going. And keep him up. Now open it. to them. What's it all about? Say, this belongs to Blackie Weed. He's a deputy marshal. Well, I'll be doggone. I caught him in here going through your papers. I don't know what he found. How did you get him aboard, like I told you? I was laying for him last night. Riggs got in the way, and I had to plug him instead. Well, get your horses quick. We gotta fetch weed back for a funeral. There he goes, boys, that's...
keep them busy while you sneak up and get them from above. Right. I must have got weed. I'll sneak in and see that the job is finished. Are you hurt bad, Blackie? Come on. Just wing me, Joe. Hurt pretty bad at first. I'm going to be all right, though. You better get going. You've got a little piece to speak in federal court. Get going. Wait just a minute, miss. Howdy, miss. Oh, you hurt bad, Blackie. Or... Can't you see? Three, it'd be a crowd over there. I guess, though, that my two gun days are about over. Well, well, there's nothing wrong with your other arm, is there? No, no, ma'am. The other arm's all right. Well, 